Hey guys, welcome back to another 3D printing video. And in today's video, we got a Two Trees Bluer Plus. So in this video, we're gonna unbox it, set it up, and do some prints. All right, so let's get started. All right, so this is the box that the Bluer Plus comes in. We see a little picture here of the printer. There's some nice graphics, the size of the box in centimeters, and it does say 12 kilograms on the shipping label. So here we are looking at the top. We can see there's a whale and it says Bluer Plus underneath. And they do use their own packing tape so you know that it's been sealed from the factory and never opened and repackaged, so that's nice to see. All right, so let's open this thing up. So again, this is quite a large box. They are using the black soft foam and there's a nice thick layer on the top. And right off the bat, this is what we see. So we got the manual. So this is a really nice quality manual. It's very thick and looks like laid out really nicely. And here we have the steps of putting it together and it looks like there's not very many steps. So most of it does appear to be pretty much pre-built. So right off the bat, this here caught my eye and yeah this looks like a, some kind of purse wow that is the most interesting and unusual i guess gift with a 3d printer now to be completely honest i don't think i will be using this for myself very interesting all right so with that out of the way let's see what we have so we have all of our tools and accessories in here and we'll check this out in a minute our usb cable to connect from the printer to the computer and it is quite long looks like a metal bracket for something okay so i think it makes a little more sense now it's for the spool holder and this is the plastic part of it where the spool will sit all right let's see how does this come out so it looks like our upper portion the gantry is pre-built and it's all in one piece here with the hot end already attached and tethered to it and right off the bat, everything looks high quality. And what's interesting, also lightweight somewhat. And I'm really pleased to see that there is a tether between the dual Z-axis rods. And that's absolutely necessary for a dual motor like this is. All right, well, everything looks really nice. We'll take a closer look here in a little bit. And so going deeper, here we can see the base and the build plate, which is really, really nice. I'm not sure what this is, but I think it's that PEI, I think is what it's called. And it is also a flexible metallic. And it does appear that we will have to install it ourselves. Well, this is really nice. So we do get a little roll of PLA, 200 grams of it, in this sky blue. Very glad to see that they included a roll and not just a coil of filament. Our AC power plug the interconnecting wires and they are those ethernet type kind of cables so that's quite interesting and we have the base of the printer itself and it is quite beefy got some good weight to it and right off the bat guys i really like this low profile and check out that detail where it says two trees cut out there into the base very cool all right guys so that's everything for the box everything was packed great and it's very nice to see how well these things are packaged these days all right so here we are looking at the base and i have to say that it is a nice footprint so it's not a huge printer but it's definitely large but this is a great size this is the size that i think a lot of people would want which is the 300 by 300 by 400 tall so it's a very versatile and a great build volume the thing that interests me is there's a plate right here that seems to come off there's four little bolts and it does require a phillips screwdriver so let's see what's in this bag here so it looks like some bolts a ptfe tubing some snippers and these are really nice we got a four gig micro sd card and also an adapter to read it that goes to usb i do have some branding on there 
So we also have zip ties and an extra nozzle and the, the tools, which we get a set of Allen wrenches and an open-ended wrench. They did include a little flat screwdriver, but not a Phillips one that I can see. So I guess they expect you to have your own if you want to open up this cover. No big deal, obviously. If you have a 3D printer, most likely you have a Phillips screwdriver. So let's go ahead and open this lid here. I have a feeling we're going to find our main board under here. All right, so that's exactly what that is. And you guys can see what that looks like. Hopefully you can see. So we do have an ARM processor, huge cooling fans on the stepper drivers, and they are removable, and they definitely look like the silent ones. So it appears to be a really high quality stepper driver, and they are on all the axes. Well, that's really neat how they made it where you can access it here from the top. But I want to go ahead and flip this thing over, and we can see underneath there's six bolts that are holding the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and take that off so we can see a little better what everything inside looks like. And by the way, guys, we do get these nice rubber feet on all the four quarters underneath. All right, so the six bolts are out. Pull this cover up, and this is what we see. So right off the bat, it all looks very nice and clean under here. And the first thing I'm noticing is this really slim power supply. So that's the brand of it. It is 360 watt, 24 volt. And one thing to note, if you do want to check what the power supply is set to, you will have to open it up and look here on the side. And mine is already set to 115. Depending on where you live, you can switch it here. So this is where our main board is. And we've got this nice shield here, our cooling fan that cools off the drivers, our display board, which is a maker base. We have the two Z-axis stepper motors, the Y-axis stepper motor. There's some kind of junction box over here, another cooling fan back here, our AC plug, which is fused, and we do have an on and off switch. And another detail that I'm really liking is they used aluminum channels on the inside to strengthen the bond between the gantry and the base. And this is where our bolts will go through into the gantry. So very nice and thought through design and everything is cleaned up very well. All right, well, hopefully that was useful to somebody. I'm going to go ahead and put the undercover back on and also the little plate on the top and then we'll go ahead and start with the assembly but before going to the installation let's go ahead and adjust the bed and you guys can see my bed here is completely loose so what we need to do is grab the open-ended wrench so this machine uses two smaller channels which gives it a wider profile for the bed which is great for stability but could be a little tricky to adjust on some of them but this one I don't know if I can I can't really show you but this one only has four rollers two on each side which is kind of interesting normally they have another roller on the inside on this side but this one only has four which technically is fine because it has such a wide grip but also makes it really easy to adjust this bed compared to the ones that have the six wheels because you would have to get the inside wheels perfect first and then you can do the outside but this one's very simple so on one side we have two rollers that are just stationary and on the other side we have two rollers that have eccentric nuts so all we got to do is just bring our wrench in there and turn the eccentric nut and that's going to bring the roller closer and farther away from the rail. So right now we're really loose. So I'm going to keep turning it until we get some resistance. It looks like we're getting a little better. Let's go ahead and do the other one. And there we go. And now we're not moving at all. And the best way to check this is to stick your hand under there and spin the roller. If you can spin the roller by doing a little burnout in one spot and your bed is not moving around, then you got it just right. So you don't want to be too tight because you'll wear out the rollers. But if you're too loose, it'll wobble around. All right. So let's open up our manual. So we have a picture of what the printer will look like and all the parts that are included. Here we have machine parameters and step one, which is actually going to be putting the main gantry on the base. And it looks like also connecting the Z motor couplers to the Z rods. So we're going to need the four M550 bolts. You guys remember this little packet we took out earlier. And by the way, guys, I haven't mentioned this yet, but I've noticed on this printer that all the bolts are like high grade. They have like little stampings on them. You probably won't be able to see it, but they show the grade of the bolt and they just look like high quality bolts. I thought it was kind of interesting and all the bolts on the base also have those stampings on them so the hardware on this printer seems to be much better quality than usual so putting the gantry on is quite simple we're just going to set it there's little cutouts here in the base and then these long bolts are going to go from the bottom and as we put the gantry down our lead screws are going to go into the coupler so let's look at it here from the back so i got the gantry and i'm going to set it right over lining up the lead screws into the couplers and it literally just sat right in there so it appears to be that they have everything adjusted already just like it needs to be. So it looks like it was pre-built and then disassembled. So everything is lining up perfectly. Well, that's really nice. So now all we need to do is just either lift the printer or maybe go the edge off your table, whatever's easier. Grab the largest Allen wrench included. So I'm going to go ahead and lift the printer and we'll start the bolts. 
So now we're gonna flip it around and do the same on this side. So yeah guys, this printer is very easy to assemble. As you can see, it's just two main parts going together. So since everything looks pretty good, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these bolts. And you definitely wanna snug these up good because this is everything that's holding the gantry. Now before we forget, we need to go ahead and tighten up this bolt on this coupler so we can bite into the Z-Rod and clamp it down. And same thing for the other side. So for step two, we're gonna be installing the hot end onto the X-axis rolling carriage. Now before we do that, let's go ahead and cut loose all this wrappings. And there's a large zip tie. Same thing for this other side. Where our tether belt is, there's a little zip tie here that we need to cut loose also. And that's going to release the belt so we can spin around. And so now we can raise and lower the whole x-axis by just spinning this belt here on top. So that'll make everything go up or down. All right, so we're going to move it up a bit so we can work on our hot end assembly. And by the way, guys, this hot end is very nicely constructed. Looks like we do have a little auto leveling module here with a little pin that comes out for leveling. Dual parts cooling fans. And it appears to be like a volcano style heat block or it's vertical. So this should do really good with hotter filaments. And we do get this little nice silicone sock. So yeah, it looks pretty simple, but quality built. So the way this thing goes is just these two bolts here. They're already pre-mounted, so we're gonna unscrew them. And the bracket on the hot end is gonna match up and we're gonna tighten it up right there. So yeah, as simple as that. The hot end is on. And while we're here, let's go ahead and install our PTFE tubing. So this thing is a little bit kinked. Hopefully it's not gonna be an issue. And it does seem to be a little long. Yeah, definitely a little long. But with the PTFE tubing, what you wanna do is you wanna find the better cut. On mine, they're about the same, but this one looks like it's cut better. And the one that has a more cleaner cut, that's more even, you wanna put into the hot end. So simply, we're just gonna stick it in there, push it down all the way. It goes down quite far, so there's gonna be a little resistance you have to push through it. So once you get down all the way, then the other end will just plug into the extruder assembly back here. Now I don't really like how long this thing is, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off. But before I do, I'm gonna grab some of these zip ties and I'm gonna zip tie it to this cable here. And you don't wanna make this tight because you don't wanna put pressure on the PTFE tubing. We're just kinda of keeping them together here so it looks a little more organized. All right, so I got three zip ties so far. So now we can kinda of see a little better how everything needs to go. So what you wanna do is you wanna roll this as far away as possible from the extruder. So yeah, that looks good right there. Make sure everything's gonna be okay as it goes back and forth. It looks good. So I'm gonna cut it right about here. I'm gonna mark it with my finger. So I'm just gonna use a razor blade and the way you wanna cut this is not, you know, just smashing it together. So don't use the little cutters here to cut it because that's not gonna turn out well. It's just gonna collapse the end of the tube. But the best way to do it is kind of like saw through it, kind of like back and forth. So that one usually works out really good for me. So I'm just sawing through it and it ends up being a nice clean cut. And now we're just gonna insert it into the extruder. I'm gonna put one more zip tie right here. Again, you don't wanna make it tight. We're just kind of keeping them together. And that's it. And that turned out pretty good. Go ahead and cut all the access off. All right, so here we are looking at the back of the printer. What we need to do is we need to adjust the rollers here on the hot end because they're way too tight on line. So when I move it, I can feel a lot of jerkiness in it. And so I'm gonna grab my wrench and the eccentric nut is down here on the bottom one. And we're just simply gonna turn it to loosen it a bit. And so the best way to check this is just kind of put some pressure on the top just a little bit and then spin the roller on the bottom. So if that spins pretty good and it doesn't wobble around, it should be good right there. Oh yeah, this is much better. So this is really smooth now. And while we're back here, we can check these rollers, but the only thing is, is that they are not adjustable. They're actually quite unique design. And we'll take a closer look once we go over the printer, but they have springs that push the rollers towards the channel. So they're out to adjusted. So that's quite interesting how that works. And they're both the same on each side. So there's no adjustments needed there. So for step three, we're gonna be installing the filament holder on the top left corner if you're looking at the printer, but we're gonna be looking at the back of it. So it'll be on this side on the right. So it's gonna go in between the belts and the frame there. But before we install that, we need to put the spool holder on here. And there are threaded holes. And in the baggie of hardware, we have the rest of the bolts we need. So two of the bolts are gonna hold the spool holder and the smooth part of the plastic part is gonna go up. And so this is what the top should look like. Now it does go this way and it is all looking to the back. And on the bottom of the bracket, we're gonna put a bolt and a T-nut on the other end and there are two of them. And so the way T-nuts work is they just go into the channel and then you loosen the bolt and then tighten after that and it should spin and lock into the channel. You're gonna loosen it and then 
tighten it up. So that looks pretty good there. I'm going to snug it up. All right, and this is what our spool holder looks like. So the spool will go on here, and then the filament will come out. And then it'll come down here through the filament detector into the extruder. All right, and so for our last step, which is step four, is to plug everything in. And it looks very simple. We only have three wires to plug in, looks like, each side here, like the image shows. So this part should be very simple. Let's go ahead and grab our wires. So it's quite interesting how they decided to go with this type of wire, at least on two of them. And one of them has the more normal. So yeah, it's quite simple. We've got three plugs here and then three plugs here. And they're all going to line up with each other in order. So it looks like these two are the same. Let's plug in the bottom first. All right. We got the next one which is the middle plug and that one will go in the middle and then the last plug that's going to go down in there and then into here so very simple and that is all the wiring which is really interesting and makes it very effortlessly even for someone that's just getting started all right and so that was step four and that is basically all of the installation instructions so here it kind of gives us a checking list to check for everything so for the next part let's go ahead and check out our build plate so this thing is really large so it is comprised of two pieces looks like. So we have the PEI sheet and there is a little protector over it which we'll take off in a second. And this is a really thin sheet of flexible metal. Now the bottom part of it is a magnetic mat that has like a big sticker and we have to peel it, stick it onto the bed. So this part could be a little tricky for some. Like for me, I usually don't do great with these but lately I've been having better success. So the idea here is to line it up really good as you're sticking it. It seems like the best way to do that is to peel one corner and this sticky part here and you want to line it up the best you can before you put that corner down that we just peeled so we're going to line up all the other corners until we got pretty much you know exactly where we need to be and then we're going to hold it down while pushing down on that corner and that should land exactly where it needs to be so everything looks really good so after quite a few tries i did get good at this part but i did have some fails before so but yeah we're just going to peel the sticker as we massage the mat in onto the aluminum plate. So, so far it looks okay. I don't know if I did a perfect job, but it's definitely not bad. And there we go, not too bad. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. And it's also good to start from one corner and massage it in so you don't have any kind of, you know, big air bubble in between. All right, so the top part should just magnetize straight to it. So we're gonna line it up and there we go. And that seems to match perfectly. And there is a little tab here up front where it's really easy to peel it off. All right, very cool. So I'm going to go ahead and peel the plastic coating or the protector. And now our bed is finished and it looks really nice. So yeah, and that is the whole assembly of the printer. So before powering on, let's take a closer look at all the details of this pretty interesting printer. All right, so right off the bat, this is quite a large printer, especially with the spool holder being all the way up there. It's quite tall, so it does take up quite a bit of room, but it's not humongous. It's a really nice size. This is probably my favorite size printer with the 300 by 300 and 400 tall gives you quite a bit of printing options. So let's start up here with the spool holder. So it's quite an interesting design, but it seems to be pretty good. It is metal, it seems to be sturdy. So this is definitely not my favorite, but there's no really great ways of putting a spool holder unless you take up more room here on the side. So the printer has a very nice clean design and that's thanks to these channels. They're very nice and flat here. And they're not just smooth, they have grooves in it, which gives it a little bit of texture, which I like better than the complete smooth ones, even though those look great also. So on the top, we do have these little guide bearing holders for the Z-axis rod, and they also keep the belt tight here with the bearing going through the Z-rod. Absolutely appreciate the belt that tethers the two Z-axis together. And this is how it look like from the back. You guys can see how the spool holder mounts. So going down, we have the hot end assembly the dual drive extruder and this is really nice because these have really good reliability with pushing the filament through so we also get an all metal filament detector so underneath all that we have the junction box and this is where all our wires plugged in and this is quite nicely neatly organized i definitely like this design we got the stepper motor for the extruder under here so very clean and organized wiring system and as we go down we can see the couplers and they are like this gold finish that's quite interesting. I will have to say again, all the hardware on this printer feels a lot more higher end than usual. So here we have all the plugs that we plugged in earlier into the base. Now I didn't think about this, but we could actually pack all these wires together in zip time if we wanted to. So I might do that to keep it 
a little cleaner overall. And right below the plugs we have some information about the printer, the print size, and the weight, 12.5 kilograms. So here we see our really large build plate. I absolutely love the design of it and how thin it is. It's flexible, so this should be a great experience. And we do have a heated bed, but it is not insulated. So hopefully that's not gonna take too long to heat up. We do get these nice orange knobs to adjust the springs on the bed tension and the springs are definitely heavy duty guys so like i said earlier this printer just has really high quality hardware we do have strain relief out of the bed but not sure if i like the way it's made it seems a little bit flimsy here but i think we just maybe need to yeah the zip tie is actually completely loose i think we need to put a new zip tie through there and tighten it up nicer but yeah, this is the cable that goes into the base, and that's for the heated bed. Then we do have a fan in the very back, and this is our Y-axis, wide stance rail, which should be good. Kind of worries me a little bit with the only four rollers, but I love how light it feels. It's ultra light. For such a big bed like this, that should be a huge plus. Now here's something really interesting. On both of the y axes on each end, we have a spring-loaded roller that pushes constantly that way which pulls these rollers in together and always has a constant clamping force because of the springs so there's no adjustment or anything needed and so that makes it a lot easier and hopefully will help with the smoothness of the z-axis going up and down so that's really unique and i don't think i've ever seen that on another 3d printer very nice to see innovation for sure so here we are looking at the back of the hot end and we already saw this earlier very nice layout good cooling looks like silicone sock and we do get a probe for leveling so and this is our also our z-axis switch so we'll see how good that works so flipping around to the front and the whale theme continues throughout all the parts of the printer with these little cutouts more cutouts here and some fins there so quite a unique design and definitely a pretty cool color too if you like this kind of touches and so on this side we have tensioning knob where we can adjust the tension on the belt for the x-axis so this is all metal here very nice high quality look now this is the only axis that has it the y doesn't have it it appears to have some kind of tensioning here so yeah again here we have some more interesting design so if you guys notice it definitely has this nice more pleasant feeling to it i guess towards kind of like a family friendly theme now looking at the front of the printer we have a really large two trees logo here but other than that it's pretty clean and we just have this really nice large screen so there is a protector over it let's see if we can peel it off all right so surprisingly it came off pretty good so yeah, the screen is quite large. I'm pretty excited to see what that looks like. But yeah, overall the printer is quite nice and quite attractive and very pleasant to look at. And so if we go to the right side, we can see this cutout with the Two Trees logo. Very cool. And as we go to the back, we have our power switch and the power socket. Now if we go to the other side of the printer, we can see this is where we're going to insert our micro SD card. And then we have the port to connect from the printer to the computer. And definitely one of my favorite parts about this printer is the super low profile. This is very thin right here. And it just has a really nice low stance. All right, so I'm pretty excited to power this thing on. I got the power cable connected. Let's go ahead and hit the power switch. All right, so it does power on and the screen looks like boots up. I can hear the little leveling pin doing some stuff and it looks like it's booted up and the UI definitely looks quite interesting. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure all the axes are working. So let's go ahead and click on tools and home and then all and it should. Okay, so it is moving. So there goes the X, and that's working. Here comes the Y, and that's good also. And now the Z. Now the Z uses a little pin on the probe there. See if I can lower you guys down. Maybe you guys can see it. But yep, yeah, there it goes. So awesome. So it looks like all the axes work. And by the way, as they were moving, I noticed that the movements themselves were very quiet. So this definitely has the silent drivers in it. All right, so let's take a closer look here at the menu. So this is where we hold all the axes. Let's go back. So we have tool settings and printing, and this is gonna read our SD card. So let's go to tools first. So we have preheat. So we do need to go ahead and preheat it. So let's do that. I don't see any hot buttons for PLA, but I selected between hotbed and extruder. So let's go 200 and the LCD is very responsive and the hotbed to, I guess, 60 should be good. Here we can change the amounts, it changes at a time, and then canceling it, and back button. So we have extrusion, this is going to control the extruder, putting filament in and out. Our moving axis, the home that we did earlier. 
outer leveling, which we'll need to do. Filament, so loading and unloading filament. More, PID adjustment. What is that? Yeah, let's just go ahead and cancel it. And then we got settings here. So it looks like we can't connect to Wi-Fi. Not sure if this printer has it. Fan controls about the printer. Then we got the continue button. So if you had power loss, you could resume. Motor off. This is going to release all of our stepper motors. So we can move everything around manually. And our language choices. Looks like we have quite a few here. Very nice. So yeah, you guys can see the fonts on these icons are quite interesting looking and cartoonish which has got a pretty nice vibe to it so let's go back into tools and preheat we can see our bed is at 45 46 so it does take a little bit to heat it up and our nozzle is already at 200 but it is all getting hot so that is a good sign so let's go ahead and go into the out of leveling okay so it's just starting to move okay so it's got the little pin out and it's measuring the bed now before we initiated that we probably should have made sure that the bed itself was quite level to the base first but it does appear to be quite level because it does seem to be pre-adjusted from the factory but yeah you guys can see it's running around and checking the bed over with that little pin okay so we're doing offsets right now so we can see here on the screen it's asking us to get a piece of paper and then we can set the z-axis offset from the nozzle to the bed and here we can adjust it the increments so if you need to do that as you get closer and then we're going to be hitting these to go up and down. So I'm just going to grab a posty note and go underneath. And I'm going to go down a little bit at a time until I get close. All right, so I touched it. I'm going to change my increments to smaller one. And this thing does get quite precise here. So we want to have a slight drag between the nozzle and the bed. So I think I'm pretty happy with that right there. So, so our bed is preheated and our nozzle is preheated. So everything should be about where it needs to be. So it's not going to change as we heat up. All right, so I'm going to save it by clicking on finish on the display. And that's it, it's finished. So yeah, simple as that, we are finished with leveling the bed. Now, if it looks like your bed is off, you're definitely gonna need to first roughly flatten it out. And the way you wanna do that is you wanna go into your menus here and click on settings and then motor off, and that's gonna release all the motors. And so then we're just gonna drop it down until we got a decent gap in the middle. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to just check, make sure every corner is close. So you might wanna do this before you do the out of bed level. And I can tell that mine's off because this corner is definitely farther away than this corner. So I think I'm gonna go back and re-level this whole thing by just moving it around and checking, making it basically all the same all around, and then go through the out of bed leveling again. All right, so I went back and re-leveled the bed. So manually, just rough adjustment, and I did have to kind of move it back and forth, so it was off a bit. So I would definitely recommend disabling the motors and then lowering this down, and then just make an even gap all around each corner. And once it's pretty close, then just hit the out of bed level. It'll take the measurements, and it'll be a lot less off, and won't have to compensate as much. So in any case, we are ready to put in some filament. So let's go ahead and open up the spool. So it's quite small, but I'm sure we can get some test prints done with it. So we're gonna take our filament and cut it on an angle. And I'm gonna go ahead and hang it on the spool holder here and bring the other end down. And so we're gonna go through the filament detector and then out into the extruder. So the extruder, there's a little arm here that we're gonna to have to pull back. And as we pull it back, we can push the filament through. And then I'm gonna go ahead and push it all the way through the PTFE tubing. And then it should come out out of the hot end. And there it goes. So let's go ahead and grab our little micro SD card and we're gonna plug it into the side here and it does go right side up. So on the main screen, we're gonna click on printing and it says no files found for some reason. Actually, when I took the SD card to the computer and plugged it in, there was a zip file and once I zipped it, a bunch of folders came out. So you do have to unzip it and then you do get some folders and one of them does have, where was it? Okay, here we go, test. And there it is. We got a 2020, looks like box, and also Elsa. So I guess we'll start with the box. I'm gonna go ahead and click on it, confirm, and look at that. It shows us a preview here. Our progress bar, the time passed, the Z axis, position, hot end temperature, bed temperature, fan speed, and then we got hot buttons, pause, stop, and option. So in the options, we can control the temperature, the fan, filament, the speed, baby step, we got more here, nothing there. So yeah, pretty good. Well, it's a baby step. Okay, so we can move it around. All right, so it's heating up. All right, we should be starting shortly. Okay, there it goes. All right, so our little pen comes out. Measures, a couple times looks like. 
So it looks like it's waiting for something, maybe to preheat again. All right, there it goes. So I guess it's purging, is what it looks like. Okay, so it looks like it's printing in that corner over there. It's going pretty quick too. And it looks like we nailed our level really good. I don't know if you guys will be able to see, but our layers are going down perfect pretty much. So it's nice when the out of bed leveling works this good. So it looks like it's making a brim maybe. So yeah, it looks good so far. Everything seems to be working and it's sticking to the build plate really well. There doesn't seem to be any issue there. So I'm going to go ahead and let you guys listen to it. So overall it is quiet but there is some fan noise and at the speed that it's printing right now which seems kind of quick there's definitely some of that stepper motor sound also. But it's not very loud but it is there so. Alright so we're just going to let this cube print out and we'll see what turns out. So I decided to go ahead and print both of the test files that were included with the printer and they both seem to turn out fine so let's look at this cube first. So this is a 20 by 20 flat surfaced cube and we can really see what the walls look like and it's not too bad but we do have a little bit of vibration there so a little a little less on one side more on the other. I think the belts might be a little too tight I'm going to try to loosen them just a bit see if we get better results but yeah it printed out really nice and has the brim here. And the great thing about the PEI is, look at the bottoms, they're like glass. But at the same time, it sticks so well, or at least it seems like that. And the top is also excellent. So printer seems to be putting the layers down really good. There is a little bit more vibration than I would like. I think adjusting the belts a little looser might help with that. So here we have, I guess Elsa is what this is. And it turned out pretty good. This will be a good time to see how this flexible build plate works. So you guys can see how large of a volume you can print on this thing. And what's interesting is this type of build plate material seems to stick very well. But let's see how well it comes off. So I'm going to just flex it. And look at that. It just pops right off. Wow, that's impressive. And there's no residue or anything funny. It just works. So that's great. All right, so let's look at this print. And right off the bat, guys, I will have to say that something is not right about it. Especially over here. You guys can see there's a lot of strange steps. I don't know if they're supposed to be there or what, but it just the surface finish is not great at all. And there's a lot of detail in the print, but it just seems like something's wrong. And it almost feels like it was sliced wrong because the cube turned out pretty much perfect. Why won't this look <laughs> a little better? But what's interesting is her face turned out really good. So that's really, really odd in a way. And this thing was kind of hollow inside, but yeah, not a bad model, but definitely, definitely not a great print quality for sure. I'm going to go ahead and slice my own prints. And we're going to start off with a calibration cube and a benchy in silky black. That way we can see everything really good. And we'll see how that turns out. All right, so we started the calibration cube. But what I want to show you guys is this model again. And I feel kind of stupid because I didn't realize that this whole piece here, and I thought it looked strange, is actually a support which goes up here I guess around her face and hair and I thought it looked a little strange it's kind of like a hand or something it's supposed to pop right off that's what it's for I just never seen one like this of course I don't use much supports usually so yeah now it looks definitely much better still not perfect obviously I see a lot of under extrusion and I'm thinking maybe that's because my extruder wasn't tight enough so I went ahead and tightened that up also and there's a lot of vibration in the print so I went ahead and loosened the belts a bit also on both axes so we'll see how our new prints come out. But usually with these prints that come with the printer, you don't know what to expect because you don't know how they were sliced and whatnot else. So, so I'm pretty excited to see what we're going to get with our own slice. All right, so our calibration cube and Vinci are finished. And one of the things I wanted to mention, and I guess it's a feature of this printer, is 
Whenever it's printing, after a little bit, the screen just goes dark. So it completely shuts it off, which is a pretty good feature. But the only thing is you can't just glance at it. You have to push on it to wake it up and see what's going on. So let's take a closer look at the calibration cube. And I was pretty happy with how everything turned out. So this is our X axis. It's looking really good. And there is a very, very slight ghosting, but you almost can't see it. And the vibration pattern is very fine. So excellent quality. So here's our Y. Also just a slight hint of ghosting, a little more than the X, but not bad at all. Our X wall and our Y wall. The bottom looks really nice. The edges are all pretty much perfect and the top looks great. So an excellent calibration cube. Now the bench tree also looks great, but we definitely had way too much stringing. So right now my retraction is set to six and a half millimeters. So I think I need to bump it up to eight and a half and see how that looks like. But the bed is still warm. Let's see if this thing pops off. And it does quite easily. So definitely one of my favorite things so far about this printer is the bed. It is just an amazing build texture that really works great. All right, so let's look at this benchy. So overall, it's looking really good. We have really nice walls and we can see all around. Now there was a little bit of something going on right here, but overall it's really, really good. No complaints there. I mean, the layers are sitting excellent. The back here looks good. Cooling is okay, but the stringing is pretty major. So we definitely need to bump up the retractions. This benchy is a little bit messy looking because of stringing, but as far as the layers are sitting, it's looking really good. And the cooling seems to be very reasonable also. And now if we look down here at the box, usually whenever I see a slit there, that means we get a little more precision, but we'll see how this printer does because we don't have a slit in the benchy on this one. But I do have my calipers here, so let's go ahead and measure this cube real quick. So on the Z, we have a little bit under and I do have a elephant foot on the bottom, so that's probably the reason. Let's measure the Y, so pretty much perfect, a little over. And we'll measure the X. Again, it's over. And this is what I was thinking, that it's over extruding just a little bit. And this is how it is out of the box. And, and obviously you can tune it out a bit in the slicer. So overall, everything is going very good. Now there is one issue and it's a pretty common thing to have with 3D printers. And it's this filament detector eating up the filament as it's going in. So it caused some snatching and under extrusion issues in which I noticed there was a tiny bit on the benchy a few places. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the spool down and use this external little spool holder that I got to hold the spool here on the side that way it feeds right into the extruder and believe it or not guys this is quite a normal problem on today's 3d printers I'm really surprised that nobody has come up with some kind of extension with a roller or something that the filament goes around and then goes to the top because there is quite a bit of pressure when it tries to make a sharp turn like that going into the filament detector or extruder depending on the setup but I'm not gonna fault this too much because every printer is like this. And the ones that are plastic, which this one is not, are even worse because you know it'll eat right into the plastic. At least this is metal, so it'll last much longer. All right, so I'm gonna print out a few more things and we'll take a look at that. All right guys, and so these are all the prints that I printed. And overall, I'm really impressed with this printer and think it lives up to the current competition like the Sidewinder X1 and the CR10. And with that said, it's not perfect. Obviously, no printer is perfect. It does have a few shortcomings, which for the first one I would say is the fans. They're quite loud, especially the one inside. Just that one alone makes so much noise. But to be honest, it's quite hard to fault this thing. It does pretty much everything right. So let's go ahead and take a look at these models. So this is a tree frog and it printed out really nice. And you guys can see how well this printer puts the layers down. So there's no issue with that whatsoever. And that's the best part of a printer is that does it put the layers down good? And this one definitely does. So this was before I fixed my retraction problems. So we still had a lot of leakage coming out from the nozzle as it retracted. But cooling is good because this part here is pretty smooth. And overall a good print minus the retractions. So here we have a bearing. And usually I like printing this because we can check the tolerances and how well it's tuned out of the box. And this printer is not up to par and it's over extruding. 
So all these gears here are completely fused together and I try to put a wrench in there and break them loose, it's just not gonna happen. So there is a way to adjust it to fix this issue. So you'd have to do it either in the slicer or you can do it in here, but then you'd have to do it every time and so there's definitely an inconvenience. But the huge plus is, as we can see on the sides here, the layers are sitting beautifully. And I did up my retraction speed to eight and a half millimeters and it seemed like most of the stringing went away, so. So I also printed this screw and it turned out nice. And by the way, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I printed everything in 0.16 layer height and 50 millimeters a second. That's usually my standard for checking these printers. You guys can see how well the bed works. It's smooth and the prints stick every time. Very impressed with the bill plate. But yeah, overall the screw turned out perfect and it feels really strong and that's probably because of the over extrusion. It makes all the parts bond really good. So obviously I had to print my two favorite prints which is the astronaut and the spaceship and the spaceship is actually still stuck to the bill platform. But before we check that out, let's check out this huge vase I printed. So this was supposed to be in rainbow filament but the transition didn't turn out all that great. So yeah, just kind of ignore that part. Overall it did turn out good. I can't even fit it in the frame, it's so big. But because it was large, it started to kind of warp. You can see right here, it's warping. But more on the rigid side, there was no warping, so it looks really good. But yeah, the layers go down really good, and they're really strong. If we go here to the top, we can flex it, and it just doesn't break. So I think this is definitely an advantage of the hot end and a little bit of that over extrusion just makes it a more tougher model. And the more impressive part is definitely the bottom. Very impressed of how well the bottom goes down until the bill plate. And not only that, it pops right off just by flexing it. And also this print is 350 millimeters tall, so it's quite a large print. So let's look at the astronaut, and this turned out really nice. So this is in bronze silk, and you guys can see the layers are sitting beautifully. And there's some discoloration, I'm pretty sure that's in the filament. You guys can see how well this model turned out. So no complaints, and even cooling is good underneath the hands here. And what's even more impressive is this is the surface area that it grips to, it never popped off. So yeah, this printer just delivers excellent quality and does it so effortlessly. So let's go ahead and try to pull this spaceship off. And this thing is very tall at 400 millimeters. I'm gonna be careful with it. So you guys can see how it's stuck on the bill plate, but if we just flex it a little, and it just blows me away, it just pops right off. As fragile as this item is, it literally just pops off and it's off. So I would say that this build platform is definitely my favorite part of this printer. It is just amazing how well it works and it's so thin and flexes really easy. And not only that, it cleans up perfectly. I'm very impressed with this build platform. All right, so let's take a closer look. So bottom looks perfect. The layers on the walls are very nice and you guys can see there's very minimal vibration all the details are there. There's usually ghosting around this window and there is some but very minor and usually a lot of ghosting on the G here. So there is a little more here but not bad and all the details are very nice. As we move up usually this part here is very nice and smooth but we do have a little bit of issues there and it's under extrusion. So I think what was happening again is that the filament was getting caught up in that filament detector as it was going in and snatching on it, giving us under extrusions. And as we went up, it just got worse and worse, seems like. Thankfully, it was able to print the whole way up, even the ball, so. But minus the under extrusion, it definitely went down very nice. The ball finished to the top, so it was a successful print overall. Very large, kind of hard to show you guys, but this is 400 from the top to the bottom. And it is only a few layers on the bottom and then one layer all the way around in spiralized moon. So yeah, overall, very impressive what this printer does. And I have to say, it just works out of the box and just feels effortless. And that's a good thing to have in a printer because you don't want to be constantly worried about what the printer is doing and what it needs, but you just want to print. And this thing makes you feel like that. And one of the things that aid in that is the out of bed leveling. So once I did the procedure once, I never touched it again and it was perfect every time. You can see guys, all these prints we printed and that was not a single issue with that. So that is a huge plus in my book and makes 3D printing that much more pleasant, especially for newcomers because constantly keeping track of the bed leveling could be quite daunting for some. Also the build quality on this printer is quite impressive especially with the hardware. It's all very simple but seems like quality and all the right components. 
The display screen is large and easy to use. The heated bed is a little bit lacking because of how large it is and there's no insulation. So it does take a little bit more time. So that's a little bit of a downer, but not a big deal. Just the time issue of a couple minutes or less. We do get all the modern features like filament detection, power loss recovery, and a pretty robust dual drive extruder. I love the cable management of this printer. Very clean overall. No messy wires going everywhere. The pretty cool auto compression on these rollers here that's definitely something new and innovative and seems to work great and definitely the most important part of having the dual lead screws is the tether on the top so yeah overall very nice and impressive printer i feel like it'll do very well because of what it offers and it seems like a great value for what you get now a few things that are questionable are the choice of the branding with the whale and you know all these color schemes here which is technically more neutral and friendly but at the same time doesn't give this printer the serious vibe i think that it needs to be very successful in the market to attract to more of those hardcore guys that i think would definitely appreciate this setup here but that said if you're pretty new to 3d printers or just want to upgrade your machine to something larger this would be an excellent choice it's not perfect you might have to do a couple things here and there especially with that filament detector and maybe do something about the louder fan noises other than that this thing really is a winner and it does so many things right for me to definitely recommend this thing so big thumbs up for me for the two trees blur plus and if you're interested in picking one up for yourself i'm gonna have some links in the description check it out hopefully you guys enjoyed this video i have a pretty large playlist where you can find more reviews also i got more 3d printing videos coming up so stay tuned for that and as always thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one peace